and welcome to the 10th lesson in the series on software. Technology has dramatically influenced many different industries. One industry that has probably been influenced more than most is the music industry. Computers are playing an increasing role in the production of music. New software enables people to compose and arrange music and develop their musical creativity even when they can't play an instrument. Today we will explore how software and hardware are used in the music industry. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify input, processing and output devices used in the music industry. State the purpose of software in the music industry. Computers have been able to make noises since the days of the ENIAC, which was the first electronic computer developed around 1947. One of the problems the early programmers faced was how to know that everything was operating properly. A common trick in those days was to connect a loudspeaker to a key component in the main processor. By listening to the sounds coming through the loudspeaker, the programmers could isolate problems that may have occurred. The first person to try and use software to create music was Max Matthews. Max wrote the first real music program in the early 1960s. He was working at a telephone company called the Bell Research Center in the USA. Max's main job was to develop practical items for the phone company. For example, he invented the little square plugs that are used on telephones. But he worked on music software in his spare time. He called his software Music. Music made its first sound in 1957 playing single line tunes. This program ran on the most powerful computer available in those days and took something like an hour of computing time to generate a minute of music. The sound was similar to the tunes played by some wristwatches today. Max continued developing and improving his software over the years. By 1970, computer music was used in about 12 schools using this software. By the end of 1979, there were probably a hundred universities and research centers exploring the use of computers in music. The interest in creating music software meant that many new software packages were developed. Today, music, computers and software are all integrated. Most music created today uses a computer in some or other way. The enhancements in technology mean that new and exciting inventions are regularly created within the music industry. Do you know that a new type of computer called a music teller is currently being produced? This machine will work in a way that is very similar to how the ATM from which you draw money works. The big difference is that this computer will not give you money, instead it will give you music. You will be able to download or draw music in the same way as you draw money. So, if you have a portable music device like an MP3 player, you will soon be able to download or draw music in the same way that you draw money. An MP3 player is a device that plays songs in MP3 format. MP3 format is a way that music files can be compressed. MP3s reduce the size of a song without reducing the quality. This means that a 32 megabyte song on a CD can be compressed down to about 3 megabytes MP3 file. There are more than a thousand models of MP3 players on the market. One popular choice is the Apple computer's iPod. The iPod has its own built-in hard drive which allows you to store your MP3 files. The iPod also acts as an external hard drive when it is connected to a computer. Today, computers are a standard part of the music industry. Did you know that the music industry uses software that allows musical equipment and computers to interact? This can best be seen by visiting one of many thousands of music studios set up worldwide. A typical music studio for an amateur musician would generally have a computerized multi-track tape recorder, a microphone, a computer and a synthesizer. 
multi-track recorder makes it possible for the artist to record different tracks at different times. A synthesizer is an electronic musical instrument designed to produce artificially generated sound. During the hardware lessons, we learnt about input, processing and output. All the equipment in this music studio falls into one of these three categories. The microphone and keyboard both form part of input. The microphone collects your voice and converts it into electrical impulses called analog signals. The microphone isn't the only way to make sound. You can also use a keyboard or synthesizer. Electronic keyboards and synthesizers send music in a language called MIDI, Musical Instrument Digital Interface, that allows devices to speak to each other through a MIDI cable. You can even get something called a controller keyboard that allows you to control several synthesizers from a single keyboard. Once the sound has been inputted, it goes into the computer where it is replayed, processed or stored. Sound cards and software aid the process. The sound card takes the information from the outside world and converts it into a language the computer can understand. It also turns the computer data back into information we can understand or hear. The sound card also determines the quality of the sound you get. The better the sound card, the more similar the recorded sound will be to the original sound. The computer can only do what it's told to do. A melody is played on the keyboard and recorded. More melodies can be recorded to create the impression of a collection of instruments playing simultaneously. Musicians can select from a range of synthesized instrumental sounds such as violin, piano or flute. Software can help you to record, mix, manipulate and do all kinds of other wonderful things depending on the package you use. Finally, your output will be the monitors, speakers, headphones and mixing desk. The purpose of a monitor is not to make music sound good, rather it's to reproduce sound accurately so you can make it better. It doesn't enhance or improve it, it just well monitors the sound. Speakers are designed to improve sound. This is great if you want to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Headphones are just speakers you wear on your ears. They are necessary if you want to listen without being distracted by other sounds. A mixing desk allows you to regulate and adjust the music. Mixing lets you adjust the relative volume of different instruments. Most music software does mixing too, so an actual mixing disc isn't the necessity it used to be. However, it is very easy to get the mixing stage wrong, so many recording engineers send the recordings to someone else to mix. Now that we have seen the equipment in the studio, let's create some music. Hi Dawn, we're here at Cherry on Top and we're here with Sven who is a music producer. Yeah, so we thought since we've been <laughs> working with software and hardware, we should write a song about it and then Sven will tell us what he thinks. Alright, are you ready? Yes, let's go. Okay, let's go. Right, go sit back, back lay back, 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 click that, love that, that, hardware, software and all that, I've done that. Click a click a tick tick, tick chill, it's a process. process. Ask me how I know, know. well, I've got, got access. Can't afford to get bored because now i got my keyboard. I bring my outdoors, indoors with my windows. Sit back, lay back, click that, love Love that hardware, software, and all that I've done. That think, that type, that send, that print, that you got that. Now stick to that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay, let's use this software package called Pro Tools and see what we can come up with. All right. Okay. Listen to the groove. There's the groove. Uh, let's get some volume on it. There we go. That's a bit of a hip hop groove. And then what we'll do quickly is something I played in a little earlier on. I'll play some bass line into it as well. Four, and it comes two, two, three, and there comes the bass. Right off the bass, we can add in a touch of piano. And here she comes. basic groove 
and we can add in a few other little things like a little lead sound and a little bit of percussion. Let's just throw our screen up. This is Pro Tools we're working on, a great package. And listen to that. So if I run through this, there's your bass. Percussion and your main loop. <laughs> so, can we go record it? Yeah, why not? Let's put you in front of the mic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yo. Let's go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sit back, lay back, click that, love that Hardware, software, and all that, I've done that Click a click a tick tick, chill, it's a process Ask me how I know, well, I got access Can't afford to get bored, cause now I got my keyboard I bring my outdoors, indoors, with my windows Sit back, lay back, click that, love that Hardware, software, and all that, I've done that Think that, type that, send that, print that, you got that Yeah, now stick to that word Yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah! So well. <laughs> yeah. And now for your task. Use resources such as magazines, newspapers, or the internet to find examples of computerized music instruments and software. Categorize these instruments and software according to input, processing, and output. Thank you for joining us for this lesson. And as always, don't forget to visit our website for more information. Till next time, keep well.